Right. I just wanted to explain the differences in all the different hydraulic systems because you were saying about the adjustment on the John Deere. Well, that runs totally different to the Fords and for the matter that for that matter the Masseys as well. So I thought if I just explain how these are set up, you'll perhaps explain why we can't do what we want us to do on the on the um, John Deere. All right. Okay. So if you look down here, can you see we have two levers, right? Now to lift our arms up, we need that lever. All the way back and i don't know if you can see there it says draft can you see where it's written it says draft yep 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 and then so that's all the way up right now both levers all the way back on the massey don't mean up because unfortunately that's your position and it says they're actually position so you have one lever to do draft and one lever to do position so for that to work and your arms to come up you need that one to there okay mm -hmm. so that's your position so wherever you put that, the arm should go to, quite simply. So there's two levers, yeah. Then if you push that forward, what that does is that lifts the arms up and then puts the pump into pump, and that's the amount of flow for tipping trailers or if an implement has a constant flow and return. Yeah. So that's how you regulate your pressures. You see, and then into the high point that says they're constant pumping. All right, but the arms have to be up on the masses for that to be for that to happen. So, when you're in position, you've got a fertiliser spreader on, or something like that, you want to lift it to a certain height and hold it, you use that lever, yeah? Yeah, but when, that lever has to be all the way up. That one has to be all the way up for your arms to come up, right. right. When you then um, want to use a plough or cultivator or something, the best way of doing it is put that one to where you want to lift up to the maximum. So this is your max height then, if you like. Mm. Right. So you put that wherever you want maximum to be. It doesn't have to be all the way up. And then when you slide that one down, that goes into draft. You know what draft means? Yep. It's your linkage sensing the amount of pull on the back. That way you, the tractor will sense how hard it's working. And this is the Massey Ferguson system, which Harry Ferguson designed and, and worked out. So it transfers the draft of the plough, or the, the tine pulling into the ground, is transferred onto the back wheels to give you grip. So you don't need weight. But it's transferring that that pull into the ground onto the back wheels which we call draft and there's a linkage as i'll show you that on the back quickly how that works all right okay and then this is the lever which controls how much pressure that then needs to lift or lower all right so then obviously forward is down into depth but what you tend to do on the older track you have to go down beyond the mark to get the arms to go in on the plow and then come back up to your mark and then work that's your sort of working height wherever that may be on here all okay right. so that's the massey system okay if we jump over on the 135 you'll see that's very similar we'll have a look on there all right okay so we put them there like that okay now what we've got here is what we call upper link sensing so top link sensing and if you look in here there's a piston in here which is actually sensing how hard this is pulling backwards so when it dives in the ground and really gives a hard pull it senses that that's then linked through here to your rocker arm, which are these two pieces here, which then works out whether it needs to lift or lower. So that's, I say it's quite simple, there's a bit more to it than that, all right? Okay. So it's working out the pull on here to calculate the pull or how, whether it needs to lift or lower. Look at that, if you put your, if you imagine that's your hand wedging into the ground, mm. yeah, and the weight of the soil is on top of that, isn't it? and you try to break that up. So that's Yes, this. but the forces should be... No. No? No, because you've got all that weight out the back there, haven't you? The, the forces... Oh, okay. If you go on a subsoiler with big wings on, the force is down into the ground, isn't it? Oh, right, yeah. So it does so guide it's itself in and it does stick in. So you see with that tine on the floor there, yeah? Yeah. If you look, the tine is trying to dive into the ground, isn't it? And it's trying to go further down into the ground. So this then lifts that up. By lifting that up, transfers the weight onto the back wheels. Yeah? Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Now, does that look familiar to what we've just seen in the very much later? Exactly tractor? the same. You've got the pressure here again, and then yeah. you draft this side, don't you? So this is a 1960s tractor. That's a 1980s tractor. And doesn't that look very similar, if not the same? Because it's working very similar, but slightly different scales. So when you look here, again, you can just see the rubber's broken on the piston. Look, there's your piston in that chamber there. Put your light on, you'll see it better. Yep. yep. So the rubber's broken here, but you can see the piston in the chamber there sensing the oil pressure. And then, as you can see by the plough, look, 
the clay was trying to bury itself in the ground. We're then trying to lift that and put that weight here onto the wheels to give you grip. That was the whole purpose of the Ferguson system. Yep. Yep. To I'll transfer find a... the draft or the pull of that plow into the ground to hold that up and put it onto the rear wheels of the tractor. Therefore, you didn't need a big, heavy tractor to pull a lot more. It's called weight transfer, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Right. Next track. Right. Now this is slightly different. Well, it's the same but different. If that makes sense to what we've just seen in there, right? We've now got two levers again. So you want to have a look. We've now got the two levers again here, but one is the position sensor, like we had before on the masses, didn't we? Yeah. So that's your position, and that's your draft wheel. So we're just the same as on the masses, really, but obviously it's laid out a bit more user-friendly. It's the a bit more modern and updated. Yeah. yeah. The beauty of this one is, if you were ploughing some sort of like black, flat, um, black land, sometimes you'll get what they call a chalky gulp going through the middle of it, where there's... There's no actual soil, but you're ploughing up chalk. So you can actually set that at your max depth. Are you with me? So yep. when the plough gets down to that depth, it doesn't then bring up all that chalky gold or whatever's underneath you don't want to bring up. So you can actually set your minimum depth, your max depth here, you see? Mm. But then that one you would use for, um, such as fertiliser spreaders, things like that, where you just want a fixed position, yeah? Rotovators and bed formers are another one. They want a fixed position, all right? Because they're not pulling on, with a rotovator, it's not actually pulling on the, the, the implement going in the ground, is it? There's no weight transfer, is there? No. Right, so, and that one. But then this one is your draft wheel, which you can then roll up and down as and when you're going through the field, yeah? These are now uh, all electronic. I think some of the first tractors to have the Bosch electronic system were the Fence and also the Massey Ferguson's when they went to the 30s, 70s, 30s, 80s, 30s, 90s, that type of tractor. What year was that? That would be the, the, about the 90s, late 80s, early 90s. It was some of the most up-to-date tractors, and they're still current. That technology is still current. And I'll show you why outside. Okay. Now, as you can see here on this tractor, this is actually now fixed and rigid. So there's no sensing on the top link. But what you have got is a load sensing pin. You can just see the guard protecting the wiring on the left hand side here. So that's lower link sensing and that's sensing both sides. And that's more accurate to the actual load being pulled on. And that's what's then controlling your draft on these. Okay, so that's, that's the same but different. Obviously we've modernised, learnt better ways of doing it. Because we've got the electronics to do the load sensing we can now go on the lower link. Alright, okay. Alright, so now we're on my this is the track you were playing with the other day, yeah? Yeah. Right, can you notice we are rigid on the top link here? Yeah, same so again. That, yep, so that's rigid. It's bolted on there, that's not moving anywhere, right? Now down the bottom there, the sensor is actually the pin going across and it's, it's measured inside, I think, on these. I can't remember truly. They Somebody are, I've replaced the sensors before. And uh, they're in the gear, in the bottom of the bottom end, are they? That bar goes all the way across and there's like a spring in the, um, in the middle, which then has a sensor which the spring and the bar nip between. That's it. So the more the bar bends, the greater the load in effect, isn't it? Yes. So that's how that is, this is measuring the amount of draft needed, isn't it? Yeah? Yeah. So it's imagine, um, me measuring the load then, yeah? So yep. that's how these ones work. But that's quite nice because that's actually inside and not external, which is a good point from protection, but a bad point if you ever have to replace one. Can confirm from replacing it's a pig. Yeah, well... It's one of those things, but it's good because it's inside, isn't it? So it's more protected. Yeah. But John Deere, as an American manufacturer, don't have our style of pickup hitches. No. And that's why it's a pig for us when we come to replace them, because they bolt the pickup oh, well, hitch you've right got in to the way. Remove the pickup hitch to get in and get, get them out, have you? Yep. There's yeah. literally a thin tin plate right above the pickup hitch, right. and you have to have all that off. And you, we used to just put two bolts in and slide it out, and you used to be able to do it that way. Oh, right, yeah. But it's a clear indication of it's an American brand. And the pickup pitch is an afterthought for the it's UK a market. European thing, isn't it? Well, well yeah, it's European. More English, European, because a lot of the European have the bars down the side where the draw bar goes up and down in the bars. The ball they? hitch, yeah. Yeah. So, right. so, are we outdated for having a pickup pitch when everybody no, else has moved on? It's pretty handy, isn't it? Well, they're easier, aren't they? Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Right. So now, as I understand, please correct me if I'm wrong. This is what they call a mixed system. So this does your arms control, yeah, which is your up and down, yeah? Yeah. 
Now, you can adjust the um, draft control on this by how much you go from, if you like, you can mix it from a position sensor to a draft sensor, and you can adjust it all the way in between, depending on how what job you do and how you feel it's going. So you don't always need full draft, you can mix it a bit. And on this tractor, that enables you to do that. Which on this one is quite simple, because you go into your menus, I've got to try and remember where you go. Oh, that's there, isn't it? There's a button there, yeah. There, press that button there. That then brings up. See, now that's showing a mixed, and you're on position four. So once you set that, you probably only adjust that once or twice a day, even if you do it that much. Obviously, okay. you, can, you can you can adjust that to where you want. You know, on such as a plough, you want to be fours to fives, yeah. But you'll see how much it works. All right. So, and that's how you adjust that. Once you've got that set, you shouldn't really adjust it only on this. Okay. You shouldn't actually need to adjust that most of the day. All right. On a lot of tractors now, the more modern tractors especially the new Holland, there's two lights, one for up, one for down. Yes. Right, so when you're working the implement, if you've got that set correctly, you can act, those buttons should then flash equally up and down. That way you know it's letting it in the ground and then it's lifting a little bit, letting it in the ground, lifting a bit. And sometimes, you know, that, that's, but you can see, they shouldn't go, bit, 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 you know, shouldn't be dashing about, but they should be gently on off, on off with each one, and that's how you know it adjusts. If we can go back to the New Holland, we can then look at all the different settings in there, because then it gets complicated. But that's just a very simplistic view of draft and position. All right? Okay. Does that help? It does help, yes. But I still feel like comparing it to the New Holland system, I shouldn't be doing that from what you've told me. No. Because exactly. they're different systems. This is probably, but to be honest, a slightly better system. Although, from experience, this I think is better as far as draft go. But when you want to do that little fine control, this doesn't move, or is not as sensitive as the New Holland. And this was sort of my criticism in that Sunday video, where I didn't feel like I was responding to the tractor, because I didn't like just being a set it in implement and just go for it. Yeah. I wanted to have that fine adjustment, which is why I preferred and even said the New Holland had that little dial that you can just sort of gently just tweak. Yeah. But well, this you, just doesn't feel the same tweak. But just remember, this is quite a bit older than the New Hollands. Yes. And also a lot simpler tractor. To be fair to the New Hollands, they are the top spec ones. Or, or nearly the top spec ones. Where this is quite a, not a basic tractor, but it's the lower end of, of the John Deere. Obviously the John Deere's now got lots more settings in them and are equal to a lot of the other tractors. To be fair, I don't think there's a better brand than any other. It comes down to personal preference a lot of the time. They all go wrong, and it's how quick they get fixed. So, all right. All right. right. So now we come back in here. We've got the very basics of, of the two sliders, right? Over here we have two little lights, which I was just saying about. So if I put the key in and turn it on, those two little lights are a good way of judging whether you, whether the tractor's working to, at its best. If they just gently flash between each other, then you're not far out on your settings. Just to confuse you even more, if we lift the lid here, we've got quite an array of, of twisty knobs. The simplest way to remember is there's your wheel slip. That one's your wheel slip. That one's hydraulic output. These three are for the front linkage on this tractor, because we've got front and rear. These three are for the rear. Okay? That one is simply drop rate, how fast it lowers, lifts and lowers, yeah? Yep, that one's, your hair and tortoise. Yep, hair and tortoise on that one. I normally have that sort of six or seven. Depends on the weight of the implement as well, okay? That one is how far it lifts up. Something I don't like to do is to lift up to maximum every time because you're stretching the, the bars on the pickup hitch and things like that. So normally have that about 90, 95%, okay? But obviously when you then go to hitch up, don't forget to turn it round to 100%, okay? Now that's your sensitivity. Now you can calm that down so that those lights don't dash about all the time. So then you can adjust how sensitive that is and how, how well that works. But they want to be gently dotting between each other. Okay, so there's a bit more to it than that, but those are the two lights you want to watch when working in draft. Okay, hope that helps. But I'd be appreciative if other people have got comments on how they set theirs up and what their thoughts are. It would be quite nice.